So it turns out that the exact area under there, and not an approximation, the exact area under that curve is 1.6. Um, and so if you can see the estimates that we were getting are actually pretty good. Um, considering that I didn't give you any real instruction on how to do it, I just said do whatever you can think of. Um, the grid idea of counting how many blocks in the grid were there. Um, one of the things that the grid idea is often extended with is making the grid finer. Instead of having it go every tenth of a unit, what if you went through and made the grid with the vertical and horizontal lines for every one, one hundredth of a unit? So you put ten lines between each line that's already there. And so now you, you get much smaller squares, you do a lot more counting. So we're going to pick a method and it turns out it's not actually how anybody does this anymore, but it's um, a good method to start with anyway. And it builds on this idea of the rectangles. So what I want to do is, as I'm doing this, I want to introduce some notation and an organizational scheme. So there's a lot going on here. Because this problem of finding areas under curves is really the central motivating problem of integral calculus. It turns out the big surprise is that this problem of computing areas actually is intimately related to the stuff we've been doing all semester. And it's probably not at all obvious right now that this problem has anything to do with tangent lines. Um, I've got to add to my arsenal that idea of drawing a tangent line and using it to, to remove area. That's that's a, that, look how quickly that approach got us into the 1.6 neighborhood. That was really cool. You know, it's very little work compared to a lot of the other methods of counting and everything. And we didn't have to throw a million random darts. So what we want to do is we want to think about taking this interval and doing what Austin did, breaking it up into a bunch of pieces. I gave that back to you, right? Okay. And the first thing we want to do then is decide how many pieces. So I want to do this kind of in general as well as the specific case. And so I'm going to be going back and forth between two pictures. One of them is just going to be some generic looking curve between a point A and some other point over here, B. And I'm going to have a curve. And for our purposes right now, it's just going to be a positive value curve. All the y values are going to be above the axis. And so this is the curve y equals f of x. And the problem, the general problem we're looking at is find the area under y equals f of x on the interval from a point A to a point B. And our strategy is going to be to start by doing what Austin did. We're going to go through and we're going to pick a bunch of points. And I want to take a specific number. And because I'm fundamentally a lazy kind of person, I want to pick a specific number that's easy, like 4. So if I divided this into 4, and I want to make them equal, if I divided this interval from minus 1 to 1 into 4 equal pieces, how long is each piece? Well, it's point five, right? Why is it 0.5? Because it's 2 and there's 3 and every 4. Okay, so the total length of the interval is 2, and we're dividing it into 4 equal pieces. So what we do is we take the interval width, which is 1 minus negative 1, which is 2 units, and then we take that 2 and divide it by 4. And what I get is 0.5, and that's going to be my common width. And so I'm going to start out here at a point x0. So we'll call the, the left-hand endpoint of the interval, I'm going to call x0. And then x1, that's negative 1 plus 0.5. So this is negative 0.5. That's right here. X2, that's going to be negative 1 plus 2 times 0.5. I've just added the common width twice. So I jumped a half unit and then another half unit. And so that's negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. And then if I jump another half unit, this is going to be X3, which is negative 1 plus 3 times 0.5 
which is 0 0.5. And then my right-hand endpoint, if I've done it right, should be the index on it should be equal to the number of pieces I'm dividing into. So my final point, x4, is going to be negative 1 plus 4 times the common width, which is negative 1 plus 2, which is positive 1. So in general, what I want to do here is divide a, B into N equal pieces. So each has width, which I'm going to call delta X, that's the change in X moving from one piece to the next, is going to be the width of the entire interval divided by N. And when I do this, my, I'm going to get a bunch of points. X0, which is my left-hand endpoint. I'm going to get a point X1, which is A plus delta X. I'm going to get X2, which is A plus 2 times delta X. The arbitrary point out here, X sub K, would be A plus what times delta x? Point number one is a plus delta x, and point number two is a plus two times delta x. What's point number k? It's just a pattern, k times delta x. And if I've done this right, this is going to be xn. That should be a plus, we jumped n times delta x. Well, that would be a plus n times b minus a over n, which would be a plus b minus a. Sure enough, I wind up with the correct point. And I want to focus on what happens at just some arbitrary interval where the endpoints are x sub k minus 1, the k minus first point, and the k point. So this is just to represent the generic place somewhere along this line of, of consecutive points. 